Hi guys, today our reading passage for the day is Lewis Braille and his dots. Um, the name Braille should ring a little bit of a bell. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, as we get into it, I'll talk to you more about what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and begin. Let me update this. This is by Paulette Sharkey. And it says, as you begin reading this description, apply the reading strategies that you're going to learn, not you just learn, the one that I walk you through all the time. Do you know how people, how blind people read? Not with their eyes, but with their fingertips. They can learn to read by touch thanks to a French boy named Louis Braille. So there it is. Braille is like where you, they read the little dots, and that's how they read in the 1820s, Lewis attended a special school for blind children in Paris. Wee oui, wee, oui, ooh la la. He and his classmates struggled with the only method of reading available to them. They traced their fingers over heavy paper with big raised letters on it. Reading one letter at a time was slow, and few books were made this way because it took so long to produce them. Then Lewis heard about night writing, a code of raised dots and dashes that French soldiers used to communicate secretly in the dark. Ah, sorry. Groups of dots and dashes stood for sounds rather than letters, but a single syllable might have as many as 20 dots. That's way too many to feel at once with one finger, so the reading was still slow. Nevertheless, Lewis saw right away that raised dots were easier to read than the raised letters. He set to work on his own dot alphabet. Three years later, he found a way to form all the letters, punctuation marks, and mathematical signs using just six dots arranged in a small box-shaped cell. I did not know that. That's a new schema for me. One fingertip could read all the dots in a cell at once, then quickly move on to the next cell. Lewis's system is now used worldwide. It's called Braille after its inventor. It hasn't changed much in about 150 years. Another person we learned about that uses Braille is Helen Keller. You all should be familiar with her. A group of raised dots represents each letter of the alphabet. Other sets of dots stand for numbers, punctuation marks, letter combinations like the CH or ING ing, and common words like the. Reading and writing in Braille. Subtitle, still Braille creates some problems. For example, Braille, looks, Braille books I'm sorry, are much thicker than printed ones because three or four pages of Braille can equal one page of type. And Braille books, Braille must be printed on thick paper, which makes the books even bulkier. Learning to read Braille takes just as much time as practice and learning to read printed books. After mastering Braille, the average blind reader moves along at 100 words per minute. That's awesome. That's a lot. That's about half as fast as the average sighted reader. Did you hear that? So they say the normal person that can see can read about 50 words per minute. I don't believe that. I think you guys are a little bit higher than that. You should at least be at 100 words per minute. That's about half as fast as the average sighted reader. There are three ways to write in Braille. It can be done by computer, with a program that displays dots on the screen and directs a special printer to make the raised dots on paper, or Braille can be written by hand with a small pointed tool called a stylus. That's actually what I'm using, a stylus. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and show you what my stylus looks like. When the stylus is pressed down on paper, a dot pops out of the other side. This method is tricky because the dots must be pressed in the back of the paper from right to left. From right, wait, wait, right to left. So then that would be this one. I'm confused. Opposite of how they'll appear when the paper is turned over to be read. So yes, they do have to write it backwards. That way when they flip the page, it can be normal. Some people use a machine that's like a typewriter with only six keys, one for each dot in the braille cell. Blind children also learn how to use a regular typewriter to write messages to sighted family and friends. So that's the third way you can use a special machine. What is available in braille? Just about any kind of reading material someone might want from newspapers and magazines to cookbooks, school books, and storybooks. Twin vision 
picture books have braille pages between the print pages, so sighted people and blind people can read them together. Even music can be translated into braille. Blind music musicians read the notes, they memorize them, and then they play from memory. Pretty cool. Braille also makes everyday life easier for blind people. One of the first things we do in the morning is decide what to wear. To help, out, to help put together matching outfits, blind boys and girls might have braille labels sewn inside their clothing, identifying the pattern of color. In the kitchen, raise dots on an oval, on oven dials. Oh my gosh, I cannot read today. On oven dials, make the cooking easier. Ingredients in jars and cans can also be labeled. You've probably seen braille number plates in elevators. Yes, they're also by our classroom doors, if you didn't notice that. Next time you're on campus, take a look by the teacher's door. I know we have them by the um, elevators for sure. You'll see the braille number plates there. Braille signs on public restroom doors. Oh, I haven't seen if they're there yet. A braille watch with raised dots in place of numbers keeps blind people on schedule. Did not know they had a watch with braille. And for fun, there are braille playing cards, braille versions of popular board games, even braille baseball cards. The possibilities are endless. With Lewis Braille's wonderful dots, blind people can easily keep in touch with the sighted wor world. This is pretty awesome. You should have learned a lot in this um, article. What I do like or what it reminded me of is the blind musician. There's one called Ray Charles. There's a movie about him. And Stevie Wonder, who's still alive, is a blind musician. I know Ray Charles used to put like a dot on, let's say, for example, his brown socks. Two dots if they were blue, three dots for black, something like that, just so that he could feel it and know what color there was, right? And because he was blind, he used to get paid all his money in $1 bills so that no one could rip him off. Because imagine if they said, oh, here's a $100 bill and he can't see it, it could be a $1 bill. So Ray Charles in the movie, he insisted on getting paid in all $1 bills. Really, really, really good movie. So that's the article. Let's go ahead and move on to the questions. So on this page, it's pretty cool. So some things I learned is there's only six dots. If you look at this picture, the little square only has six dots. I did not know that. So here's the alphabet. So this would be, I guess, individually. I'm curious to see a word. Uh, so 10 combinations of the top four dots in the Braille cell. Adding the lower left dot makes the next 10 letters. Adding the lower right dot makes the last five letters. That's very confusing to me, but it's very fascinating. That is pretty, pretty cool how people can read like that. So here are your questions. And on the quiz, on the Schoology quiz, I'm also going to have the audio for you too so you can hear me read the questions. If you notice, one through five is all about vocabulary. Didn't mean to move that, right? So number one says, in this context of the selection, what's the meaning of stylus? I just showed you what my stylus looks like. Love, love, love it. This is how I'm able to do these videos. I can use any different color I'd like. Isn't that like... I like amazing. I love it. Here's white. Super cool, right? I'm using that with the stylus. I can't use my fingers. My fingers are too fat. Number two, they're asking you, what does it mean to be a cell? Number three, they're asking you, in which sentence is the word braille used correctly, right? So three of them are, I mean, two of them are going to be wrong and there's only going to be one that's correct. Number four is asking you, which phrase best describes what Braille is and what is a dot alphabet? That was in that last page we showed you. So this is going to be your 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. For whatever reason, I'm never thrilled about the strategy check. So this is always going to be my 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is comprehension asking you if you're understanding what you're reading. Number one says, with which body part or parts do blind people read? Easy peasy. Number seven, which sentence best describes the schooling?
for someone who was blind in the 1820s, right? Number eight, on which system did Lewis Braille base the alphabet? So what system? Did he use big raised letters? Did he use night writing? Or did he use the ones that were used by the French soldiers? I will do all the multiple choice on the Schoology quiz, okay? Number nine says, how long did it take for him to, prevail, uh, to develop this dot? A year, three, or five? I remember that one. And last but not least, number 10 says, in what way does Braille not make life easier for blind people, right? So your strategy is yes, no, right? Does A, does it make life easier for them? Yes or no? They're asking you for the no, okay? This is the one that you guys always struggle with. All right, good luck, guys.